And my next question is, how is your portfolio of properties having a positive environmental or social impact? And Bjorn, how's that the case? Um, well, we're twofold. Uh, we're working very hard to ensure that our incumbent portfolio um, meets the uh, future minimum requirement for energy performance certificates. Um, and there's minimal capex required uh, to bring any uh, which are below um, the, the minimal threshold of an EPCB up to standard. It's in the orbit of two and a half million, albeit I should remind everyone that actually 99% of our portfolio does have a EPC certificate between A uh, and uh, B. Um, the second point is we're developing a brand new modern uh, logistics real estate for our customers and customers that we don't yet have and attracting them into uh, buildings to achieve the best rent with minimal void periods. They need to have um, fit for purpose uh, uh, fundamentals, property fundamentals, and that is in the form of energy generation, which can be delivered through um, photovoltaic um, panels on the roof. Um, we're also um, providing environments which have biodiversity and uh, well-being centers for uh, the occupiers. Now, they also are dictating um, what they wish to include within their buildings. And these larger format buildings can accommodate um, gyms and canteens and child care centers to ensure that the environment is, um, is, uh, is, a, is a nice place to work. And we're sort of distancing ourselves from the older characteristics and understanding of industrial and logistics, which sounds dirty and um, archaic, where these buildings are modern um, in landscaped environments with a multitude of facilities. Um, so the environmental and, and social elements are core to our strategy. Well, quite honestly, I wish I was working at one of these buildings with a wellness centre and a gym and landscaped and biodiverse. It sounds amazing. Um, Richard, how about you? What are the environmental and social benefits? Um, I think the first thing to say about you know, the uh, it's often referred to as the ESG agenda, um, it, it has just become embedded. It's just the way you manage real estate and you and you manage it because there is a strong financial imperative that suggests if you don't, you're not going to attract the best tenants, you're not going to get the best rents, you're going to, and at the end you see your, your uh, buildings falling behind. I mean, I think taking a slightly different take to, to, to Bjorn, I think that the way we um, measure environmental impact at the moment uh, is, is, is looking at a very sort of fixed point in time. So if you, you create a brand new building and it's got a very low um, um, uh, environmental performance certificate and it's BRIAM excellent or superb or whatever other superlative uh, BRIAM come up with to describe their buildings. Um, that's all well and good, but does it leave other buildings behind? And I think the way we look at environmental performance needs to change. And we should be giving credit to those landlords who are repurposing existing buildings and uh, retaining all that embodied carbon that's in those buildings and making the best use of those buildings. They're very often, and this is sort of quite different to Bjorn's portfolio, in city centres, which, you know, there's a huge social benefit in bringing people into the city centre, either to live or to work or to shop. Um, so I think that as an industry, we need to take a more grown-up look at environmental issues and make sure that that people are properly rewarded, and that means that you know shareholders need to come on this journey too. Because if shareholders don't reward um, fund managers for doing it, then the fund managers aren't going to do it. Um, uh, and it's not it's not a huge part of what we do, but I you know I think we need to try and encourage positive behaviour with the appropriate uh, legislation and the appropriate um, uh, metrics to to measure environmental and social impact. <laughs> 